today marks the big 2-0. <laughs> Indeed, my friend. Could you have imagined that you would work at Carter's for over 20 years? Well, you find something that works, and you just stick with it. You and Christine have any plans on celebrating the momentous occasion tonight? Eh, nah, nothing special. Probably just order pizza, you know, play some board games with the kids. Just another day. I got a date tonight myself. Really? Yeah, you know that new hygienist from the dentist's office? Yeah. She totally digs me. I'm just trying to decide if I want to splash on Stetson or Old Spice. Vaughn! Mr. Carter wants to see you in the office before you go. Okay, I'll be there in a second. Nice! Mr. Carter! The boss man! Mm -hmm. He's probably gonna give you a bonus. We're gonna have to let you go. Effective immediately. Brian's got your separation papers. I'm really sorry, Vaughn. No, I understand. You know, if, if you want to come in tomorrow when there's nobody here and get your tools, that'd be okay. Thanks a lot, everybody, for coming out. Help me celebrate my uh, 20th year at Carter's. Turns out, though, uh, my 20th year was my last. They let me go. I'm sorry, you guys. Thanks for coming out. I'm sorry. So you're just gonna take this? I know you got my back, Larry. And you're just being a friend, but you still got your job. You need to focus on that. Well, well. Looks like I got me a brand new ball. Thanks for tracking our ball down for us, Gibby. Oh, no you didn't. Dad! What? He's trying to take my new ball. Is there a problem here, Point Dexter? No, no, there's no problem. Gibby, you can keep the ball. That's what I thought. Now listen, I know that you've been mowing this section of my yard. What you need to know is we're getting a pool. So, I need this section of my yard back. 
Okay. Roland. Okay. Of course it's okay. You're dismissed. <laughs> Run along. What a pansy. Always has been, always will be. So I'm unemployed. You know, I've never not had a job. Honey, listen. Do not let this get you down. We aren't in any danger here. We've been married 14 years, and we've never taken a vacation. I just lost my job. I'm not Chuck Norris. I can't just roundhouse kick the classifieds and have a job drop out of them. Vaughn, relax. Relax? How can I relax? What if I were to stroke out? You don't even have a family history of strokes. Well, those things come from somewhere, don't they? They strike without a notice. And now we don't have health insurance. This could be just the thing you need to change everything. Change? There's just so much more out there. I love you. You know that. The thing is, you sell yourself short over and over again. You don't... I, I, I don't... I don't what? You know, time was, and I didn't give you any good reason for it, but I knew at least you believed in me, but I guess that's changed, huh? I can't deal with this. I'm gonna go clear my head. Vaughn, Just... wait! You know that's not what I meant. And then she says, oh, now we can go on vacation. I can't go on a vacation. I've got to uh, figure out where to apply for the food stamps, map out all the soup kitchens, and find some of those free health clinics. I've got to prepare for life on the outside of society. I'm sorry, dude. Relax. You've had a lot laid on you today. Yeah. Didn't you say you had a date or something like that tonight? Oh, yeah. Well, I figured on account of the events of the day that, uh, well, the truth is, is she's gonna have to take a number, you know? Yeah. Larry can't be spreading himself so thin. Cause, uh, I got skydiving tomorrow, and I'm going to the gym, and, uh, I'm taking a new MMA class. MMA? I had no idea they offered that kind of stuff down at the Y. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a real deal. Can't wait to get in that ring and tap out some of those clowns. You know, like arm bar and choke hold and whatever it takes. I don't know, dude. Sounds like a perfect recipe for like a herniated disc or some sciatic nerve damage, if you ask me. Well, it's not for everyone. The ladies love it, though. You know, being fierce and all. Could I interest you fellas in a couple of figurines? Why? What's so special about them? You purchase one of these, it'll lead to all your wildest dreams come true. I could use a little of that. How much uh, for two of those carvings? That'll take care of it. Well, doing business with you. What would you want, Vaughn? What do you mean? I mean, all your wildest dreams coming true? What would that look like to you? I guess pretty much how things were until today. Wife, kids, a job, which I no longer have. How about you? Me? Well, I'm living the dream, Brosif. I mean, my Rolodex is full of numbers of awesome babes. I'm an extreme sports athlete. I still got my good looks and charm, and I got an apartment. I'm driving a Pinto, which is a total chick magnet. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, man, you've always had it figured out for yourself. I'm happy for you. Mind if I come in and grab another slice of that cake before I hit the road? Sure. What's on? 
some western. I was made for times like that. The open air horses. You purchase one of these, it'll lead to all your wildest dreams come true. I could use a little of that. You purchase one of these, it'll lead to all your wildest dreams come true. I could use a little of that. I could use a purchase one of these, it'll lead to all your wildest dreams come true. I could use a little of that. I could use a Shining. Get off me. Air conditioning. Get off me, dude. Larry! Still tired. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we're outside! We, we're in the desert. You're dressed like Charles Ingalls. This is a dream! No. We're just dreaming! No! No, no, check it! Just punch me in the face! Oh. I never get hurt no. in my dream! No! Just punch me, Vaughn! You punched me in the forehead! Well, this isn't a dream! No. Now we've been drugged, we've been kidnapped, and we've been dumped in this desert. I think someone slipped us some roofies. I've seen this on Dateline. Really? Somebody kidnaps two grown men, flies them across the country, dresses them like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and leaves them in the desert to die. You have not seen this on Dateline. Oh. Oh, gosh! Who is that guy? You don't recognize me? I've never seen you before. Are you sure about that? It's the figurine guy. He pushed us all the way out here in his cart, and this is supposed to be our wildest dreams come true? What a ripoff! No, 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 no. This is no dream come true. This guy has drugged us. Okay, Indian cart pushing trinket selling guy. Oh, it's on. It's on like Donkey Kong, yeah. I was made for a time like this. Let's get this thing going, Tonto! Relax, Larry, before you hurt yourself. Yeah, I know your name. I know your name too, Vaughn. Larry Mizell. Born to Marshall and Esther on June 20th, 1973, in Fairdale, Kentucky. You like long walks on the beach, romantic comedies, puppies, nice clothes, candlelight dinner. Okay, that'll do! He cracked into my dating profile. Is nothing sacred? Don't you think you owe us an explanation? You two have been watched, measured, and found wanting. But you've been born to such a time just as this. No, 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 no. I I'm sorry, you've got us, or, or at least me, mixed up here. Uh, Mr. Kizikoni. OK. Mr. Kizukini. Kizikoni, Cheyenne for burning fire. OK. Mr. Kizikoni. We are not the right person for your... Special chosen task. Yes, yes, your special chosen task. Listen, I'm a loser. I just got fired from my job. Please, just put me back on the couch where you found me. That'd be great. No, you're just the right person, and you're going to help him, Larry. What have I done to you, Mr. Kizukini? You answer me that right now. You two will mount and ride these horses due west till you come to the town of Pumpkinville. Oh, no, 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 no. We just want to go home. People of Pumpkinville need you, you need them, and you need to heal the town. You have two weeks to complete the task. If you don't, you'll never return home. Heal the town? What does that even mean? Heal the town? You figure it out, fellas. Two weeks. Well, where are we? You're in the Arizona Territory. You mean to tell me that you have dragged us out here across state lines to Arizona? No, Arizona's still decades away from being a state. It's 1875. The clothes you're wearing, modern attire. You better get riding. Stay on this road right here. Eventually, 
You'll reach Pumpkinville. Wait, 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 wait. Don't you think this is all just a little ridiculous? Dear Lord, that man practices the dark arts. This has got to be some kind of a joke. We're just supposed to get on those and ride due west. Which way is west? It's not like these babies are outfitted with any kind of a GPS. Did you see that man appear and disappear out of thin air? I saw it. Cool. You know, he said it was 1875. How's that even possible? You know, we're just gonna have to get on these things and ride. How do you get up there? I guess you just try to put a foot in here and throw a leg over or something. Hey Vaughn, I'm up here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is this how you steer it? Uh, I don't think so, buddy. Uh, I think you might be up there the uh, wrong way. Hey, you think that's our town up there? Well, it's either that or it's another ghost town. How do you figure we're gonna settle in there, you know, when we get to Pumpkinville? Figure out what needs to happen to get ourselves back home. I don't know, I, I think we're just gonna have to take it as it comes. Maybe we can get up there and see if they have a church. Why's that? Ever heard of a little hamlet called Walnut Grove? Why does that sound familiar? Little House on the Prairie? Oh. Okay. I mean, I've seen every episode of that show at least twice. And if this is the 1870s, my knowledge is going to be gold. How do you figure that? Well, I've studied them. I know their customs. I know how to communicate with these people. Well, hopefully you know how to talk to these people a little bit better than you know how to uh, take a punch. Come on. The church. Now let's get down there and see if they got a reverend, see if he can help us out. All right. Come on. What's the name of this town, youngin? This here's Pumpkinville. We made it. Hey, do you know a place we might be able to stay? Uh, the hotel's been shut down for about a year, but you can go see Amelia at the Mercantile. Much obliged. Where'd you get that coin? Found it in my pocket. Hello. Oh, we 
were looking for Amelia. Is this the right place? Sure is. Amelia's my mother. She'll be back any minute. How can I help you? Well, we was wondering, Half Pint, if you might have a place where we could hang our hat for a night's rest or two. Can I help you two gentlemen with something? They were inquiring about a place to stay for a few nights. You aren't in the Willows, are you? Uh, running from the law. No. Mother. I have every right to know what these two strangers claim to be up to. Ma'am, we're from back east and we're only passing through. Listen, we've had a week's long ride and we're just looking to rest for a spell. All right, well, Laurel, get you settled then. Gentlemen. Please excuse Mama. She's been raising my brother and I for years since Pa passed on, and she can be quite suspicious. Oh, that's fine. We understand. Take these two up to the cabin and see that they get settled in. Well, here it is. If you need anything, you can go see Mrs. Henderson and Laura at the Mercantile. Hey, do you know where we can find a church around here? Uh, yeah, there's doxology work on the east side of town. Great. Is there a minister there? Yep, Reverend Callahan. Would you look at this place? Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing breeding ground for brown recluse spiders. This is just like Mr. Tucker's place. Little house, stayed in a cabin just like this. Listen, I'm really happy you're getting a chance to relive some of your childhood TV viewing memories, but the clock is ticking. We gotta figure out what we gotta do to get up out of this place. I hear you. But when in Rome, you gotta blend in with the Romans. We gotta take stock of the locality. This bed isn't half bad. About the when in Rome business, you think there's any chance that you might be able to go a little bit easy on the isms? You can't be calling people half pint. Relax. Life's a journey, my brother. We're gonna find our way out of here. We just need to enjoy the ride a little. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy the ride out of here. This place is Walnut Grove made over. You know what? We ought to see if we can find a Doc Baker. Doc Baker? Yeah, he was the town's... He was the town's doctor. Doctors heal, right? They diagnose a problem, they come up with a remedy, and they deliver the medicine. I know what we need to do. Yeah, we need to find a creek or a bath and change it to some new threads. That's my suggestion. No, no, no. He said the town needs to be healed. So the town would need to be sick or broken or something like that, right? Okay. Yeah, well, that's it. We figure out what the town's problem is, and we do whatever it takes to solve it. Exactly. And you can't do that without understanding them. See, that's why I've been using the whole lingo thing so that we can connect with these folk. I see where you're coming from. Well, then... Let's find this doxology works in Reverend Callahan and let's get this show on the road. Would you look at this place? It's a small town. Small church. Could fit 10, maybe 20 people in here. 35 if you stack them in correctly. Uh, Reverend Callahan. And who do I have the pleasure of meeting? Well, my name is Larry and this is my partner Vaughn. Nice to meet you fellas, just passing through. Uh, no, we plan to be here for a week or two. Is that so? What's the occasion? Well, we're, um, oh, uh, here. All right, to do a little research, um, we're writing a, a story about the town uh, for, um, for a... A benefactor, a benefactor uh, back east, uh, where, where we're from. And uh, we, we thought we would, uh, we and rode our horses. We're gonna just be here for a week or two. We're gonna file our story and we're just right back out of here. Well, no need to rush, fellas. Do you make uh, lodging arrangements? Oh, yeah, we have. Uh, yesterday we met uh, Laura and Amelia down at the Mercantile and they've let us rent their cabin. Oh, you're in good hands with Amelia. Hmm. You should meet some of the people here in town. Get the lay of the land. 
I can show you around and introduce you to folk if you like. Sounds great. This is Elijah Woods, our blacksmith. Oh, nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Bought a Larry here to do a story for a paper back in Louisville. <sighs> Careful, that might be hot. Gosh, darn it. You want to draw a little bit more attention to yourself? Well, there should have been a railing or a warning sign there. Sorry, long day of travel. Boys, thanks, Elijah. Nice to meet you, boys. You take care. This here's Sebastian, our town deputy. Sebastian, meet Vaughn and Larry. They're staying at the Henderson cabin for a few weeks. I got five beans in a wheel here, and I won't hesitate to let them loose. I think you made your point. Well, nice to meet you, Sebastian. Hope to see you around real soon. What is his problem? Never mind him, he just needs to feel important. That's just his way. Fact is, we don't even have a sheriff. He's actually a deputy to no one. We just allowed him to amble into that role. I <laughs> figures. You're acquainted with the mercantile. Well, thanks for showing us around, Reverend. You're in good hands here with Amelia. Sunday service is at 8. Can I expect to see both of you in attendance? We'll be there, Reverend. Sure. Anything, you've bought it. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Larry, why don't you just go wait outside? I've got this. Howdy, ma'am. Hola. My name is Rosa. What's your name, senor? My name's Larry. Lawrence. My, my name's Lawrence. Uh, Lorenze, see? Si? Yes, Desert Rose. My name is Lorenze. And Lorenze is very pleased to meet you. <laughs> Where are you from, Lorenze? I saw you talking with my father this morning. Who's your father? My father's Reverend Callahan. I... You're Reverend Callahan's daughter? He told me so much about you. Yes. Yeah. What have you heard? Well, you know that, that your name's Rose, and that um, yeah, he's a minister, <laughs> and... Uh, hey! Uh, back away! Just back away! Right! The scoundrels are bothering you, Rosie? Just tell me. Tell me now, and the swift hand of justice will fall. Sebastian, go back to your jailhouse. I don't like you shouting at my friend. We'll see about this, Larry. His name is Lorenze. Oh. Perfect. Spreading an alias already, I see. Well, I had a feeling deep in my crawl using no good varmint. That's enough. Go back and mind your jailhouse. That's the second time with that guy today. What's his problem? Don't worry about him. He doesn't mean any harm. Hey, Larry, got some groceries. You ready to go, man? Yeah, come here. I want you to meet Rose. Rose, this is my partner, Vaughn. Rose here is the Reverend's daughter. Oh, well, uh, nice to meet you, Rose. Uh, your father's been very helpful. Yes, that is my father's way. Very helpful. Hope we'll be seeing you around again. Yes, I look forward to it. All right. <laughs> we'll see you, Desert Rose. <laughs> do you think that, uh, you think that deputy's got a screw loose? Oh, he does. I mean, he came up with me all crazy-like when you were in the store. You know, when I was working my magic on Rosa. Listen, I'm completely not trying to tell you what to do, man, but you know she's not our main goal here, right? Yeah, I got you. I'm just, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting to know people while we're, you know, trying to sort all this stuff out. Mm -hmm. I agree. I know you're kind of an enjoying the journey type of a guy, right? And that, that's fine. It's just, 
I keep thinking about Christine. I wonder what she's thinking. Got the kids. Well, you know what, man? Just as easy as we were whisked out here, that Keezy Coney guy, he can get us back home. Yeah. You know, the Reverend was saying that uh, they used to have a restaurant. The town used to have a hotel. Makes me wonder. It doesn't seem like this town is quite what it used to be. You know, but towns like this popped up all the time back in the day and then just disappeared. I mean, you saw all those ghost towns when we were riding in. Yeah. I wonder what happened to them. I don't know. You know, I think they were just old mining towns or maybe the well ran dry or... I don't know, maybe people just went to other towns. Bon appetit. Well, that was, uh... Delicious! I mean, we just had our first meal on the frontier. Loved it. Well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Dude, I have wiped out. How about I get some shut eye? Oh, I'm right with you. We got church tomorrow, and I gotta get my beauty rest so I can look good for Rosa. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I gotta figure this out. This morning we look at Moses, who was the greatest man in the Old Testament. Moses got the Ten Commandments from God. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. He led the people from Israel out of captivity and slavery in Egypt. Why was God so effective in his uh, use of Moses? because Moses made some uh, choices in his life. So we see Moses ask, who am I? What are my choices? What's important to my life? What are my goals? And in closing, my final exhortation to you is accept responsibility. Like Moses, you make some choices. No matter what happened to you in the past, you have the freedom to choose how you're going to respond. Never take your eyes off the goal. Get a clear vision, find God's purpose for your life, and focus in on it. Take chances and never, ever give up. Thank you, Will. Good to see you, Wilbur. I'll be over next week to check on that fence of yours. Okay. Very nice message, Papa. Thank you, sweetheart. Nice to see you, boys. Good to have you as guests. It's nice to be a guest, Reverend and, and Rosa and such a gift to behold such a beautiful face on a gorgeous day. Uh, of course, nice to meet you again, Rosa. Could you boys do us the honor of having a picnic lunch with uh, Rosa and I? Absolutely. We we'd love to. about your lives back in Louisville? Well, we work together on um, carriages. On the side we do that, but my main pursuit is to be a hot air balloon owner and operator. Really? How interesting. That and I'm, I'm an inventor. Yeah, you sure are. So how does that fit in with the story you're doing about our town? Well, 
we've been working together uh, for the last 20 years on carriages. That all ended right before we came out here. I see. And from there, uh, we got the opportunity to come out here, kind of the offer that you can't refuse. Some of my background is in, uh, is in writing, mainly poems and sonnets. I did most of my writing during my stint at uh, Harvard. Do you both have families back home? Yeah, I, I do. A wife and three kids. You must miss them so much, being away for so long. I'm a single man myself. I've just been so dedicated to my studies and work and... In all of your hot air ballooning and all of your inventions? Of course. I just haven't made the time to take on the duties of being a husband. Now, not that I don't want to. I'm just looking for the right woman. You know, one to, to love and care for, to honor and cherish. And from this day forward to death do us part. We're pleased to have you with us. Rosa, would you mind getting some more water, please? No, oh, sure, Papa. May I assist you, please? It would be my pleasure. Well, I thank you, Lorenze. So, are you a famous man in your town? Being an inventor of things and having hot air balloon? No, well, yeah, but I'm still the same Lorenze as I was before the fame and fortune. <laughs> How about you? What's it like being the most beautiful woman in town? <laughs> Lorenze, I, I don't think such things. Okay. Have you lived here long? Yes. Since I was 15 years old, I moved here with my father and my mother. My mother, she got sick and died. I lived here ever since, just taking care of my father. Sorry to hear about your mother. Yes. Gracias. Her and Papa adopted me from an orphanage when I was just a little girl. Well, I'm glad they did. <laughs> me too. Enjoyed your sermon this morning, Reverend. Thank you. Yeah, that Moses, uh, quite a character, huh? Yeah. yeah, indeed. Quite a person of faith. He knew some problems in his life. Really? Sure. He didn't exactly volunteer for the job of saving all those people. Had to have been scared. But he decided he wasn't going to run. Just too much at stake. It wasn't easy, but he did it. Hmm. I guess sometimes the stakes are just too high. Failure isn't an option. I suppose you're right. What can you tell me about Pumpkinville? Well, it was founded about 20 years ago. There was an abundance of wild pumpkins down by the river, hence Pumpkinville. That makes sense. The town's fallen on tough times the last few years. Really? Six or seven years ago, the town was bursting with promise. What do you know about that deputy fella? Oh, you mean Sebastian? Yeah, he seems, uh, he seems different. We went to school together. I think he tries to be nice. Seems very interested in you. Papa says he wants to marry me, but Papa says, no way. <laughs> well, I knew Reverend Callahan was a smart man. <laughs> You're very funny. Hey, I think I found what I'm looking for. I know I have, and it comes in a 120 pound package of Mexican goodness. What? The Desert Rose, Vaughn. The DR, baby. Oh, come on. Listen, this whole heel of the town thing, all right? There's this ghost town slumlord, Malachi. Reverend says the town has been on decline for years, and he lays most of the blame for that on Malachi. How's that? Well, apparently he goes around buying up all the land and he runs the people out. You remember those ghost towns we saw on the way in? Mm -hmm. His handiwork. Mm -hmm. So this is what I figure. I know where he's at. You and me are gonna ride out there and talk to Malachi. We're gonna convince him to take his boot off the town's throat. Just a little and we'll be back out of here. So you're just gonna walk up to this Malachi dude and you're just gonna ask him to stand down? Now how's that gonna work? I don't know. What would Moses do? WWMD? Yes, WWMD. What would Moses do? Reverend Callahan's talk this morning? 
you weren't paying attention. No, I wasn't. But did you ever see Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments? Check it. Snake turns into a staff. Cue the wind. Lots of people, hair flowing, beard, majestic on a mountain. Okay, well anyway, so Moses got the call to up his game. You know what he did? He came out swinging, and that's just what I'm gonna do. Come out swinging. Right, right, left. Left, right, left. Bam, bam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like get in there, beat him down, and make him tap out, and you, you'll come out swinging, bro. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah, and, and you just get in there and, and, and take a punch. Oh. I don't know about that. No, you, you, you just get in and fight. Listen, do you have any idea how sensitive the human temple is? One wrong punch and you're a goner. I just thought you said you weren't going to take this lion down. Well, I'm not. I know where he's at and we're going to ride out there and we're going to see him. That's what I'm talking about, bro. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk to him. We're going to reason. Just get him to let up on this town a little bit and we can be back to Louisville in a flash. It's on, bro. How can I help you, fellas? Hey, uh, we're about ready to go on a long trip. I was wondering if you could take a look at these guys and make sure they're ready for the long haul. Where are you off to? We are off to Pine Hollow. For your story? Yeah, we're gonna go see a guy, William Malachi. Malachi, huh? Watch yourself. Oh yeah? Why? Got a reputation for mayhem and quick on the draw. Y'all might wanna get some sidearms. Guns? Yeah. Are those really necessary? Necessary if you want to protect yourselves. Always be careful. Sweet! I got a killer pair of chaps to go with these. Well, thank you. Shoes are in good shape. Have a good ride. Well, thank you. <gasps> Gunslingers. I knew it. Well, this is it. It sure is. Looking for a William Malachi? Got business with him? Well, we hope to. Well, he's right there, but if I was you boys, I'd be careful. He just said we need to be careful. Let's just leave now and come back a little later. Come back with what? I don't know, maybe some backup or something? Backup? We don't have backup. Well, you know, bigger gun like a howitzer or at a gallon gun or something, I don't know. We ain't having no shootout here. I never said we were. I just thought maybe he would respect a bigger gun. Just follow my lead on this one. I Let's got an just, idea. No, no, no just... not this time. Will! William Malachi! Who here's William Malachi? Who's asking? It's okay. I'm Malachi. Please me. Oh, no, 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 shoot! Easy. Easy. That's no way to treat our guests. Sorry, I... I didn't mean to startle anybody. Please, sit down. Thank you so much. Can I interest you two in a drink? 
Oh, no, no, no. We wouldn't want to impose. I'm not here. Much obliged. Much obliged. Glasses are small. Just drink it. Thank you. Not tea. It's tea. This is rotten. So, to what do I owe the honor of, of making your acquaintance? Well, Mr. Malachi, uh, we're doing a story for a publication back out east, which is where we're from, and well, we we decided to settle in uh, uh, Pumpkinville for a few days. Interesting choice. Well, it uh, it's basically the only town in the area. That's so. So tell me, what would be the purpose of your story? Well, Mr. Malachi... Now, what... let me stop you right there. Call me William. Please, I insist. Okay. And you two are... My name's Vaughn, and this is my partner, Larry. And let me back up, gentlemen, and say, pleased to meet you, and welcome to our little oasis. Now, about the story. Are you familiar with the plans for the Southern Pacific Railroad to come through this area? I am. Well, there's some people in the town that have indicated that you've made interest in making sure that the railroad bypasses Pumpkinville. I have no interest in the affairs of Pumpkinville or any proposed line there. It was mentioned that you had some role in buying up some land around Pumpkinville. I respect the people of that town, and I can understand why they would want to circulate an idea that I would be interested in taking ownership and refurbishing their town. Why? Well, such a rumor, if it were true, and I assure you that it is not, would increase the value of their businesses and holdings. But the fact remains, gentlemen, I have no interest in doing business there. What about hindering business? Absolutely none whatsoever. Well, thank you so much for your time, William. It was a pleasure meeting you. Well, gentlemen, are there any more questions I can answer? Mm. I don't have any. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, see you guys. Well, that went well. Yeah, and you wanted to bring out the big guns. Whatever. I'm never gonna get that tea taste out of my mouth. And Tom looked him in the eye and said, like only Tom could, that's why this town needs a printing press. <laughs> <laughs> so <funny>. Tom. <laughs> Good man. Indeed. Yeah, I miss him. I do too. We all do. The whole town does. The place is not the same without him. How long since you lost Harriet? Eight years. It seems like forever. Rosa, come see the new fabric Mother just got in. Yes, I would love to. Hello! Back from your trip already? How did you know we were gone? You were at the blacksmith this morning. Small town. Yeah, guess so. Pine Hollow, was it? Yes, sir, we what went out. What business do the two of you have in Pine Hollow? Oh. Uh, you see Malachi? Yes, yes, we did. Exactly, who is it that the two of you think you are? Mother. Amelia. I just thought we could go and talk to him and reason with him. Oh, and how did that work out for you? Well, at first it was a little dicey. The tea was awful, but yeah. uh, what did you talk about? Word in town is that you two uh, have been dealing with Malachi. Yeah, we just thought we would ride out there, reason with him a little bit, talk to him about allowing the train station here. He says he has no problem with Pumpkinville doing that kind of business. And he lies. He's a bad man. Maybe. But why would he lie? Maybe things have changed. Maybe he's got his sights set elsewhere. Could that be possible? Maybe it is. Maybe we could get Rogers back out here. Rogers my old friend that works for the Southern Pacific Railroad. It's worth a shot. We could get him back here? With Malachi out of the way, we at least have a chance. That could be wonderful. Thank you. 
Well, we did what anyone in our situation would have done. Uh, absurd! Asinine! Idiotic people! It goes here. Right here? No. <laughs> right here, silly. Oh. What would you do, Rosa? If you could do anything, what would it be? I want to teach school. I could totally see you doing that. <laughs> You'd be a great teacher. You should do that! What else would you do? I want to meet my husband, have a family, raise the children, things like that, I suppose. Have you considered anybody that you might marry? No, not yet. Emilia says that Mr. Wright will come along sometime, and I'll know it's him when I see him. What about you, Mr. Question Man? You've probably done everything with your big inventions, your balloons, and your studies. Yeah, I've done a lot. But I'm thinking that there's more out there. Like what? What would you do next? I want to be a dancer. <laughs> a dancer? Really? Laugh if you will. But Lorenze here can dance. He can really dance. Yes, well, please, let's see your dance moves. Well, I wish I could, you know, but there's no place to dance in here. And man, I wish we had a dance hall, but... You're, you're wrong. On Thursday, we're having our one-year big dance here at the saloon. Everyone's coming from all over. It's really fun. Really? Yes, really. Can you take me to the dance? You can show me your dance moves. Yes. Yes, I will. I'd love to. Hey, there you are. I got some news for you. Hi, Rosa. Hello, Van. I'm so excited about the dance. Hey, can I talk to you? Larry? 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 Dance? What dance? Oh, well, they're having some big thing here at the end of the week, and she wanted to know if I'd go with her. Oh. Well, hey, I got a plan. You and me are going to ride to the Southern Pacific offices in Yuma. We're going to talk them into building a station here. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It's our ticket out of here. We talked Malachi into changing his mind. We're going to do the same thing with the Southern Pacific Rail Station. Well, maybe. Well, maybe nothing. We will. We decide what we want. We act. We focus. And we do this thing. 
Wow. Where did Vaughn go? Who are you? Who am I? I'm the guy that's going to get a ticket out of this place and get back home to my family where I belong. Back home. Yeah, back home. Saddle the horses, buddy. We are out of here. <laughs> Here to see you, Roger. Send the back, please. Hi, I'm Vaughn McDaniel. Vaughn. And this is my partner, Larry. Larry. So, uh, what business do you have with Southern Pacific today? Well, we wanted to uh, talk to you about a proposed rail station in and around the area of Pumpkinville. Okay, go ahead. Have uh, plans been made for exactly where such a station will be located? Well, not as of yet. There seemed to be some dispute as to whether the railroad could obtain workable terms. Right, I understand, and I can assure you that those issues have long since been resolved, and the town does indeed want to negotiate uh, with Southern Pacific Railroad. What do you suggest? We suggest you bring more kids to Pumpkinville so Rosa can teach them. Excuse me? Our want and desire is that you consider renewing a review as Pumpkinville as a viable place to put the rail station. Now, the people are behind it, and they're ready to negotiate terms that are favorable for both the town and the railroad. I can be there on Friday. How does that sound? That sounds great. Now, I assure you, sir, it's going to be well worth your time. <laughs> I'm sure. Gentlemen, don't forget, tell the captain the old war horse is coming. You have our word. Good right. day to you. Take care now. Thanks, sir. We are in business, man. So, I was thinking. I could escort you to the dance tonight. You wear your best dress, I'll wear this rugged uniform. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I, I don't think so. Not this year, Sebastian. <laughs> Are you playing hard to get? I see. You pretend to not want to go with me to the dance, and I work harder at trying to convince you. It's not. This pillar of law Justice does not play games. It's not like that, silly. It's just I've already been invited to go with someone else. That someone else wouldn't happen to be that Larry guy, would it? I'm not sure it's any of your business. I mean, calm down. I will not stand for this aggression. Sebastian gets what he wants, and Sebastian wants you, Rosie. What is going on here? Nothing, Papa. No worries. This has been a long time in the making. And now I'm ready. Sir, I love your daughter. She is my soulmate. I, I was made to love her and she was made to love me. Reverend, today, I ask for your daughter's hand in holy matrimony. Sebastian! Sir? I see your daughter and I walking down the streets, protecting this town from anybody who would dare harm it. There will be children. And Lord willing, they'll grow up to be just like me. I don't know what to say. I know this is a lot to process, but the time has come, and we're ready. I can't give my permission. She doesn't want to marry you. I'm sorry. No, not okay. I know who to blame for all this. Coming in town, ruining my plans, stirring up so much confusion. 
it always something with that guy? Hey, I got something to tell you guys. Amelia, come here. Guess who's coming to town? Roger. Roger McCarty. How about that? How'd you arrange it? Well, we went to his office and we talked to him and he agreed. And he's going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow? This is terrific. We've got to get this place together. Uh, Laura, go get all the banners and have Elijah put them around town. Uh, Rosa, make sure all the boardwalks are swept. This is what we've been working for. Finally, things are going our way. Well, I'll see you at the dance tonight. I wouldn't miss it. Hey, where's Larry? He'll be here in a minute. I think he's got a little something special planned. Wow, some costume you got there, amigo. <laughs> Why don't you get your dance shoes out here and uh, show us what you got? Hit it, Charles. You look wonderful. <laughs> you look very handsome. You look handsome, too. I mean, beautiful, too. I mean, I'm handsome and you're beautiful. What do you think you go Got you this flower. Very pretty. <laughs> do you want to dance with me? Yes, I do. Shall we? May I have this dance? Gringo, why don't you show me your uh, special dancing skills again? Show them what you got, cowboy. Only this time, don't hold back. Just give me the best you got, buddy.
<laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> well, I told you I could dance. <laughs> no, no, that was incredible. I thought nobody could dance better than Sebastian. Until you met me. <laughs> Maybe I would have looked better if I wore a little leather vest and a little <laughs> pretend badge and a gun with five beans and a barrel just waiting to discharge. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you were very funny. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Lorenzo. I've enjoyed these last few weeks that we've had together. Me too. I think you are so smart and funny and <laughs> I like being around you. I like being around you too. I like the way you look. I like hearing about your dreams. I think you're the most incredible woman I've ever met. Thank you for saying that. That is so sweet. I wish you didn't have to go. I'm going to miss you so much when you leave. But I know you have all your inventions and your balloons back home. I don't care about that. If I could, I'd stay here with you. If you'd have me. I could never ask you to do that. To just leave everything. I would if I could. I love it out here. I love the way the moon shines in your eyes. The way it makes your skin glow. And I love your outfit that you put on tonight for the dance. <laughs> it was very cute. <laughs> Did you like my hat? Yes. It was very big and Mexican. It was a very nice touch. <laughs> if there was any way in the world I could swing it, I'd stay here with you. I don't know exactly what it is that we have between us, but I feel like we owe it to ourselves to find out. Do what you think is right, Lorenze. If you can stay and it feels right, then I would like that very much. It makes me very sad to think of never hearing your voice again. is looking great. Let me walk you around and show you what's been going on. Excellent. Is that Malachi? What is he doing here? I don't know. Probably just dropping by to say hello. find here. You only have to gather here in my honor. Looks like we've got some business being conducted here, fellas. Did I order any business to be conducted? It's funny. I don't recall that I did. I thought I made it clear that this sort of meeting would require my attendance. And since I normally wouldn't attend such a pointless meeting, such a meeting is entirely unauthorized. So here's how we're going to solve this little problem. You, Roger, are going to get back on that horse you rode in on. And the rest of you, I order to return back to your meaningless and pointless lives. Why don't you back it down about 10 notches, partner? You ain't got no say in what we're doing here, so why don't you skedaddle? I see. Well. Looks like we have no say so here, boys. I must have been mistaken. I guess we should just uh, get on our horses and sk 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 skedaddle. Or on second thought. <laughs> Whoops. 
Did I do that out loud? I'm sorry. That was an accident. And I know there's been accidents here before. And I would hate to see any other tragedy befall this pathetic excuse for a town. So why don't you all just go back to wherever it is you usually are? It'd be your safest option. Any objections? Wonderful. You're free to return to nothingness. And you'll do it if you know what's good for you. happened? Malachi just happened. He wasn't a thing like that the last time we met him. I thought you had this taken care of. Yeah, they had it worked out. Now he's gonna be back and burn down the town. That's right. This was a great place to live till you two came to town. Thanks a lot! Oh, man. Come on. Take him to the mercantile. Come on, Oh, come on. Seriously, Rosa, wait! Wait! Haven't you caused enough trouble already? Just a minute. These boys aren't to blame for this. Malachi is. We can work something out. <sighs> Captain, I'm sorry. There are still too many unresolved issues at play here for the railroad to get further involved. It's just company policy. Sir, if I may please, I don't know what Malachi was doing here, but if you'd just allow us another chance. I'm afraid that's entirely out of the question. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry I wasted your time coming here. At least allow me to let you stay at my home tonight. I accept. Thank you very much. Hey, how's your head? Awful. Thanks to you. I'm sorry he hit you. I know it must have really hurt. In fact, I bet you have a stage three concussion. Look, how many fingers am I holding up? Get your hand away oh. from my face. Why don't you calm down, you psychopath? <gasps> don't you insult me. Why, I have half a mind to do what? You feeling froggy? Why don't you jump? Wait. <gasps> calm down. Okay. <laughs> you want some? Nobody. <gasps> really? Down. You asked for it. Whoa! Whoa! By the power vested in me in the territory of Arizona and the town of Pumpkinville, I hereby place you under arrest. On what grounds? Treason! Now get them belts off and turn around, <laughs> you <laughs> yellow <laughs> belly. Don't you say another one. <laughs> Dead men walking! <laughs> yeah. Dead men walking! I said a dead man walking! Oh. And anyways are having us the hanging! Stop this! Stop this right now! Get back, woman! This don't concern you! Keep... Go back up right now! Make them brief. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today in the presence of this town. I don't want to die! <laughs> the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. Four score and 20 years ago, I have a dream, a dream that's deeply rooted in the American dream. Today, 
I consider myself the luckiest man. One small step for mankind, one giant... Oh, enough of your babbling! No one understands what you're saying or wants to watch you cry, you yellow sissy! Oh, where's the lever on this thing? On a count of three! <laughs> Here we go! One! Oh, mercy! I never had a chance to live! Two! What do you think you're doing here? Stop at this instant, Sebastian Walker, before I take you over my knee and give you a what for. Back away from there, now. The charge is treason and the penalty is death. Am I right or am I right? I say, am I right or am I right? Come on! Sebastian, it's over. You know, with you here, we'll never get to use these things. What a debacle. You think? Yeah. All that had to happen was Roger would take a little look around town, see that he liked what we had, and we would have been up and out of here. But instead, in one second, the whole town hates us, and next thing we know, we're being strung up. Oh, yeah. Well, nice work out there, pumpkin cakes. Pumpkin cakes? What's your problem all of a sudden? Oh, let's see, what seems to be my problem? Let's start with you personally arranging for us to be hung out there. I think you got me uh, confused with the little third point of the lover triangle that you got yourself involved in. It was Sebastian that had the gun, not me. Yeah, whatever. You know, come to think of it, you weren't really much help up there, were you? With all your little sobbing. Mm, okay, and you and your bizarre mashup of speeches really got the job done there, didn't it? Yeah, which is a lot more than what you did with all your little crying. Knock it off, you whiner. Oh, why don't you relax? You know, now you're gonna have all the time in the world to pursue your little relationship with Rosa, right? Because now Christine is a widow and the kids, they don't have a father. But no, 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 no. You just worry about your little relationship with your girlfriend, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and whose fault is all of this? I mean, you do realize that this is your fault in the first place that we're even here, don't oh. you? Okay, okay. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit more about that? Because this will be really interesting coming from the, can I even remember it all? Let's see. The balloon-owning um, inventor with the Ivy League education. You ever stop to think that maybe Roja likes you a little bit more for who you pretend to be rather than who you are? Do you want to go there? Sure. You really want to go yeah, there? Let's do it. Okay, let's see. We met Jacuzzi down at the river. Why were we at the yes. river? We were at the river because you were whining and moaning and complaining about getting fired from your stupid job. And rather than standing up for yourself, you did what you always do. You took it lying down. Oh, boo-hoo. I got fired. Time to eat government cheese. Yeah, well, I... This is a debacle? You're the debacle. You don't have anyone to blame but yourself. You know, I tried uh, standing up to him this time, and what did it get me? It got me stuck in this little time warp wearing these stupid clothes with somebody with the emotional intelligence of a 12-year-old boy. You take that back right now. Okay. I'm sorry. These clothes aren't that stupid. Larry! Larry, come back! I didn't mean it. So I think I'm gonna stick around a little while longer after all. Oh, that would be terrific! But I thought you had to get back home with Bon. Bon and I are part and company. He's going his way, and, well, I'm going mine. It was a pleasure seeing Rogers again. I wish it were under different circumstances. You said we had a nice little town here, but it came down to the unwillingness of the railroad to work around any kind of problem that Malachi might pose. 
I wish it would have worked out. He's coming! He's coming! Malachi is coming! He's coming from the south! citizens of Pumpkinville this morning. Hello? Anybody here? That's a shame. Because I'm here to torture town. Anybody want to try to stop me? What's this? A challenger? <laughs> Run along now, boy, before you get yourself shot. Does a newspaper man really want to get hurt over something as pathetic as this town? Well, I guess the answer to that is yes. Let us begin. Two for the price of one. Terrific. Which one of you would like to be shot first? Well, I guess that would be you. That was cool. Yeah, Vaughn? You just used all your bullets. I don't, I don't think he, I don't think Malachi knows. I'm pretty sure he knows how to count. This isn't your fight, Reverend. This is my fight. What about all that turn the other cheek stuff? As Moses commanded the Pharaoh, let my people go. Now, there's no need for bloodshed. I respect you fine folks. I, I have no quarrel with you. My quarrel is with him. I'm not leaving you, Vaughn. I got this one, Larry. you're gonna do, Malachi. You're gonna get up off that ground and you're gonna go back to your pathetic, meaningless, worthless life. Or else... Or else what, Sebastian? First of all, you're gonna hit him in the head really hard. Then you're gonna embarrass him for everybody and make him look like he's a, 
pretend lawman and hurt his feelings. Get up. Get out of here. Go on. Get up. Get out of here. Yeah. He's gone. He is gone. <laughs> I smell bacon. I love bacon. Daddy, Daddy, wrap it! Where's the cheering crowd to Pumpkinville? Is this real? We're back? <laughs> yes! I am so sorry I was gone. But now I'm back and things are gonna be different. I promise. You're back from sleeping on the couch. Yeah, yeah, from the night on the couch. You want some breakfast too, Larry? Okay. Can you get one of the chairs from the party last night? They're alongside the house. Okay. What in the world has happened? I have no idea. A time warp? A dream? Like a mirage? I mean, it can't be. We did it. I'll tell you, that Keezy Coney, he's a man of his word. He said, heal the town, and boom, we're back. Nice bit, head sport. Listen, I'm gonna need you to get that fence out of here by noon. We're getting the pool today. Why don't you back off, Roland? I got this, Larry. I'm not gonna pull up my fence so you can put in your pool. You wanna put a pool up, put it on your ground. Oh my goodness. I guess you really do wanna get body slammed. This isn't the third grade anymore, Roland. I want you to get out of my yard. I'm serious. Leave now. Cut him down. Are you sure you want to rumble? Let my people go. Come back again, there'll be more where that came from. Can I get you a water while you wait? Uh, water would be great. Thank you. What up, cuz? Little of this, little of that. So how was your vacation? Oh, it was perfect. So where'd you guys go again? Uh, seven night Western Caribbean cruise. <laughs> you went on a cruise? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, we're dying down at the shop without you. Mr. Carter says he wants you back big time. Yeah, he's left me a couple of voicemail. You coming back? Well, no. I'm not. Vaughn's Collision Center. And I'm in need of a new service manager, so if you know anybody. What's going on with you? Call it the Pumpkinville experience. Man, I've done over a hundred searches online and can't find anything about that place. Some things can't be explained. I just say, thank God it happened. Talk about an eye-opening experience. <laughs> I mean, for one thing, I am done living some pretend life. Yeah. It's time for me to open up and try something new. Here you go. Thank you. And what can I get for you to drink? I think I'll just take a water. A 
be back with you later. Thank you.